everyone and welcome to Off The Wall. My name is Sol and today I'm going to talk about my anticipated releases for the first quarter of the year. I have three books for the month of January, eight for February, and six for March. Remember to like and subscribe and let me know down below in the comments what books you are looking forward to this year. So let's get to January. The first book I'm looking forward to is Feybound by Sarah El Arifi, which comes out on the 18th. Sarah El Arifi is known for the Ending Fire trilogy, with the first book being The Final Strife, which has been on my TBR since it came out in 2022, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. The summary for Feybound starts with Divided by Blood, Imprisoned by Fate, Bound by Desire, Welcome to the Intoxicating World of the Fae. This was all in capital letters, by the way, on Goodreads. That just sounds intriguing. And other than Holly Black, I haven't really delved that much into Fae, so I'm excited to check this one out. Another book coming out on January 18th is The Principle of Moments by Esme Jaikemi Pearson. Did I say her name right? Who knows? And I believe this is her debut novel. This book is recommended for those who like the Shades of Magic series by V.E. Schwab, which I adore those books. In the synopsis, it says that it is a century-spanning space fantasy novel that will take you on a whirlwind adventure. From a Regency-era love affair between a time traveler and the prince waiting for him in the past mission in the 60th century, where a girl desperately races against time as she searches for the sister the emperor stole. I tend to really like books set in space, and I don't read them as much as I should. I was a big fan of Ender's Game when I was younger, and I loved Do You Dream of Terror 2 by Temi O. Oh. So I'm hoping Esme Jaikemi Pearson keeps the streak going for books set in space. The next book comes out January 30th, and it's a sci-fi romance. A Quantum Love Story by Mike Chen. These two people, Mariana and Carter, get stuck in a time loop, repeating the same four days over and over again. Everything resets, including bank accounts, and the only thing that remains is their memories, until Carter's memories of the time loop start slipping, and their only chance at happiness is to get out of the loop. This sounds super cute and feels like a romance book I will actually like, I found in the past few years that I actually do like the genre of romance. I'm just extremely picky. Now for February, the first book is actually the third in a series, and that is The Trials of Empire by Richard Swan, coming out on February 6th. I have heard nothing but good things about the Empire Wolf series. I believe this is the final book in the series, so it's a perfect time for me to jump in. To not spoil anything, the first book called The Justice of Kings is described as Action, intrigue, and magic collide in an epic fantasy following Sir Conrad von Vault, an emperor's justice, who is a detective, judge, and executioner all in one. But with rebellion and unrest building, these are dangerous times to be a justice. It just sounds really good, and I hope I'm not the sole person who doesn't like this series. That's something I always fear when a series is super popular and I haven't gotten around to it yet. I'm like, oh no, what if I don't like it? <laughs> but I'm hoping I'm gonna love it because so many people love this. Next on February 13th, we get the sequel to The Mimicking of Known Successes by Malka Older, and that's The Imposition of Unnecessary Obstacles. I'm excited that this series is going to continue. The first book is a Holmesian murder mystery set on Jupiter, and with a detective main character, you can write a bunch of these books with each book being a new case. There are endless possibilities. I loved the first one last year and I'm always here to support Cuban American authors so I hope she continues to write a bunch of these. The next book is also a February 13th release and that is The Fox Wife by Yang Zicho. It is being described as a very atmospheric historical fiction fantasy mystery. How many categories genres is in this book? I believe it is based on a Chinese myth the synopsis starts off, some people think foxes are similar to ghosts because we go around collecting key or life force, but nothing could be further than the truth. We are living creatures just like you, only usually better looking. <laughs> this is very intriguing to me and it feels like it's going to be a page turner. Also on February 13th is a memoir by Elizabeth Camarillo Gutierrez called My Side of the River. 
In the book, she speaks about being a U.S. born daughter of Mexican immigrants who, when she was 15 years old, were deported and sent back to Mexico. And living her life in the U.S., having to take care of her younger brother while still going to school. In the synopsis, it states, armed with only her passport and sheer teenage determination, Elizabeth becomes what her school would eventually describe as an unaccompanied homeless youth, one of thousands of underage victims affected by family separation due to broken immigration laws. My Side of the River explores separation, generational trauma, and the toll of the American dream. It's also, at its core, a love story between a brother and a sister who, no matter the cost, is determined to make the pursuit of his own dreams easier than it was for her. Unfortunately, this is the reality for so many people in a bunch of different communities, but especially in the Latino community here in this country. I know reading this will make me both sad and angry. In these types of books, there's usually a little bit of hopefulness and joy in it, so I'm hoping those elements show up as well. On February 20th, the sequel in the Sansi trilogy, The Ashfire King by Chelsea Abdullah comes out. This series is described as weaving a tale of myth and magic in a world steeped in Middle Eastern folklore and is perfect for fans of The City of Brass, which I love, and The Bone Shard Daughter, which I own but haven't read yet. Also on the 20th, a Korean translated book, Welcome to the Hyun Yum Dung Bookshop by Hwang Bo Ryum and translated by Shana Tan. Available for the first time in English, this book is about Young Ju, a woman who is burned out, who quits her high-flying career, divorces her demanding husband, and leaves her busy life and soul to move to a small residential neighborhood outside the city and opens a bookstore. This is apparently a really popular book in Korea. One of the only Korean translated books I've read before, Kim Ji Young, born 1982 by Cho Nam Jo, I loved that one, so I'm hoping that this one is also another one. The next book is also a February 20th release. Man, February 20th, a lot of books coming out. A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Faisal. She is known for her books, We Hunt the Flame and We Free the Stars. This book is the first in a duology about an orphan girl and her crew who get tangled in a heist with vampires. I'm here for it. <laughs> Now for March, the first book comes out on the 5th, and that is Women of Good Fortune by Sophie Wan. Set against a high society Shanghai wedding, a reluctant bride and her two best friends, each with their own motives and fed up with the way society treats women, forge a plan to steal all the gift money on the big day. This feels a little bit like Ocean's 8, and I'm also here for this. Also on the 5th, The Truth of the Aleki by Moses Oze Otomi, Sequel to the Lies of the Ajingo comes out. These books are novellas and therefore really short, so I don't want to spoil anything. Next on March 12th, we have a book that I am so excited for. I predict it's going to be a five-star read, and that is Those Beyond the Wall, the sequel to The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson. I thought The Space Between Worlds was a standalone, and it was my favorite book of 2020. And when I found out that there was a sequel, I just can't explain how happy that made me. In the first book, the concept is that there is a multiverse and the only way to travel to other worlds is if you are dead in those worlds. This makes it that the disadvantage those who are more likely to be dead in other worlds due to violence, famine, and just the results of being poor are the only ones who can traverse the multiverse. So the company that discovered the multiverse brings in this woman named Kara, who is dead in almost every other world to collect data for them. This company is located inside a walled off city and only the rich live there and you have to have special paperwork to get into the city. Kara is from the outskirts of the city in the desert where the poor and disadvantaged live and they have zero access to the walled off city unless someone from the city brings them in as a guest. This book is about classism, big tech, and a whole other host of things, and I loved it so much. And the fact that there will be more in this world makes me really, really happy. I've been wanting to reread The Space Between Worlds, and now I have the perfect reason to do it. Also on March 12th, a Chinese translated sci-fi, Jump Knots, by Hugo Award winner Xiao Jingfang. This caught my radar because it's translated by Ken Liu, the author of the Dandelion Dynasty series, which everyone raves about, and I have serious FOMO over. This is another one that 
everyone loves. I haven't gotten into it. But back to Jump Knots. It's described as a sci-fi thriller in which three unlikely allies attempt a desperate mission of first contact with a mysterious alien race before more militaristic minds can take matters into their own hands. This is another book set in space, so I have high hopes for it. Coming out on March 19th, the next book I'm going to talk about is Cascade Failure by L.M. Sagas. It is described as featuring a fierce, messy, chaotic space fam, vibrant worlds, and an exploration of the many ways to be and not to be human. There are only three real powers in the universe, the corporate power of the trust versus the union's labor's leverage, and between them, the guilds which try to keep everyone's hands above the table. I have a feeling this book is going to have a lot to say about capitalism, but in a sci-fi setting. Next is The Weavers of Alamaxa by Hadir Elsby, which is the final in the Alamaxa duology, with the first book being The Daughters of Izdahar, which is a combination of modern Egyptian history and Avatar The Last Airbender. Those are all the books I'm looking forward to in the first quarter of the year. Like I said earlier, let me know down below what books you're looking forward to and what books I might have missed. As always, remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.